to describe this problem here uh, that I got to, uh, or I put in my slides but didn't get to in lecture. And it describes what happens when you swing a mass down. And I want to know what happens at the bottom of this trajectory when this little cephalopod here comes down and swings through the zero point of its swing. And this combines two things, the ideas of energy and the forces involved in circular motion. So this trajectory here is going to be part of uniform circular motion. And what I want to do is consider the forces here at this point where it's swinging past the angle equals zero. So if I draw a free body diagram for the cephalopod pod at that point, I get two forces here. Uh, this is totally meant to be a single arrow. Uh, so let's try that again. Two forces. There's a tension and a weight going down, mg. Now this object is in uniform circular motion here at the bottom of the, uh, or it's in circular motion at the bottom of its trajectory. So we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction has to produce a net acceleration in towards the center of circle with a magnitude of v squared over the radius of the circle, which in this case is l, the length of the string. So it's v squared over l. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that the sum of those forces is going to be in the vertical direction. It's just t minus mg divided by the mass of the object has to be equal to ac, and that is v squared over l. And I'm going to solve this equation here for t. So we're going to take t is equal to uh, mg pushing the m, or we're going to multiply both sides up by m and push the mg over. So it's mg plus mv squared over l. So these are our two uh, forces that are combining and balancing what the tension forces are. So then our next step is to figure out what v squared is. And for that, we're going to need a bit of energy. And if I look at this geometry in a little bit more detail, I have this arc coming down. I can actually figure out the height that the cephalopod drops using trigonometry. So I know this length here is L. I also know that this length to the bottom of the arc is L. And I know that this angle here is theta. And therefore, if I know that this is, uh, this total length is L, and this little component here by trigonometry is cos theta, I know that the height drop of the cephalopod is equal to L minus L cos theta, or because we have great factoring powers at our fingertips, we call that L is equal to 1 minus cos theta. All right. OK, so now we've got all the pieces we need to start stringing things together. We know that the height drop, h, is equal to L times 1 minus cos theta. So we can use the conservation of energy in this problem. So we know that the final energy minus the initial energy for this system is going to be 0 because there's no external work being done on my swing and cephalopod. And I know that the final energy here is going to be uh, 1 half mv squared plus mg times 0 for the height. So this is the final energy. And I'm going to subtract from that its initial speed, which is 1 half m times 0 squared. And uh, for that, then I'm going to take off the uh, initial potential energy, which is plus mgh. Uh, and that is equal to 0. So I can go ahead and then sort of push this onto the other side, the mgh to the other side, and I just get something you probably could have written down at the outset, that 1 half mv squared is equal to mg h. Now, from here, I also want to consult back uh, to that force equation that I have, which is just saying that t is equal to mg plus mv squared over l. And that gets us to a common pattern in these energy problems, in that I often end up with a, or energy problems in circular motion. I get an mv squared from the kinetic energy. And algebraically, there's an mv squared here showing up in the centripetal acceleration 
uh, term. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this equation to get mv squared, the energy equation, to be mv squared by itself on one side. So I get that mv squared is equal to 2 mgh. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and substitute that into my force equation right there and see what we get. So then we get that the tension is equal to mg plus, here's the mv squared, which is 2mgh over L. And then I'm going to bring in my geometry argument and pull that on into this equation. So I know that that's mg plus 2mg times my height, which is equal to L times 1 minus cos theta all divided by L. And so what's cool here is that the L's cancel out, and I'm left with some algebra here. So I can go ahead and rewrite the tension here as uh, mg plus, well, we can distribute this in. 2mg is 2mg minus 2mg cos theta. So I get the tension is equal to 3mg minus 2mg cos theta, or factoring out that mg, that's equal to mg times 3 minus 2 cos theta. Now it's all over but the substituting. So we've got m is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms. g is 10 meters per second squared. 3 is equal to 3. And then we get 2 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we pop all that out, and we get an answer of 1.268 newtons, or 1.27 newtons, and done.